All right, so this video tutorial is going to cover uh, setting up and taking a Revit file and sort of doing a little bit of work to it to enable it for 3D printing. Okay, and so what I've done here is I followed the previous steps that I did in um, another video, um, Revit to Rhino, Rhino to Revit, uh, and so I've brought in that file. Um, I've done some cleanup in here um, so that I, I didn't bring in everything that I could possibly have brought in. Uh, so I do some cleanup ahead of time. Since I know I'm 3D printing this building, I didn't bring in the furniture, the casework, um, a lot of that stuff. Uh, and you need to do as much of that cleanup as you can ahead of time uh, because just the extra geometry is going to really backlog and, and make mach the, the machine run slower. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we take care and pay attention to that. Okay. All right, and so uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and the first thing I'm going to do, you will find these sort of exterior wall layer, that's A wall, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off. Okay, and you can see now we have the guts of this thing and there's still a ton of extra stuff that we don't really need in here. And so I'm first thing I'm going to do, I need to is just start to turn some of these layers off. Like I don't need any of the interior walls. I don't need, uh, let's see, I don't need any of the doors. So I can turn that off and don't panic. I'm not going to go too crazy here. I want to leave the mullions alone, but I don't need those doors. Um, I don't need the stairs. I don't need the stair rails. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, uh, we do want the windows because um, that way we're going to be able to enable this. And so this is starting to look relatively clean here. Um, we'll leave the columns and we'll leave some of these structural members um, since we're going to print. I don't really want this, but I'm going to leave this. With, let's see what this part. Let's see if I can find that guy. We'll turn that guy off. And I'm going to go ahead and just move this up here. And then I'm going to, and you'll understand why I'm doing this here in a second. So this was a, a hole that was generated for an elevator shaft in the project. And I want to make sure that I seal that up. So I'm going to, because I want, don't want that to appear in my 3D print. So then I'm just going to union those things together. So now this is one guy that behaves um, nicely. And so as we start to think about what we're going to do in Revit, uh, this is uh, essentially what we want to be able to do is take this and 3D print this. But because of all the empty space and because of the way that you modeled it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense in the way that you're going to be doing this. So we need to turn this into a essentially a solid object uh, with a distinct interior and a distinct exterior. And so the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to use the scale1d function. And using our floor plates, we're just going to essentially in create an entire envelope with that. Uh, so I'm going to click and hold, oh, rip that out. So we'll use the scale1d there to there. And let's just go up to the bottom of the, the, that floor plate. And it looks like we could probably go up a little bit higher. And again, just like it, um, in some of the previous demos I've given, it doesn't matter if these things overlap, that's completely fine. Because um, when we go to, to take that in there, we'll be able to make those adjustments. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to go ahead and boost that up. All right, and then so once we get into there, we can start to see now we have a nice solid model here that we can start to adjust. And I'm just going to take this little bump out here and I'm going to scale that 1D until it goes all the way down. Uh, we can go, I'll just show you, like, it doesn't matter how low this thing goes, um, as long as it doesn't poke out the bottom, which it looks like, oh, we're good. So those two things are occupying the same space. And so now we have this sort of nice, clean, solid on the interior now. So that, uh, if we were to go to 3D print this, it would interpret that as an interior. And then we can go ahead and turn our walls back on. And so now where we have our gla glazing, it's infinitely thin, uh, but because of the way Revit mounts floors to the walls, um, the walls and the floors now overlap. And so if we go over here, you can see that overlap in here. So there's our, one of our floor plates that I extruded up, and then there's one of our one of our walls. And so that's perfect. That's exactly how we want to think about um, the, the modeling and 3D printing for um, taking care of that. And so what we can do from here is now we're essentially ready to take this to 3D print. Um, let's select any clo any open, sorry. Open, open poly service oh, and it looks like we have a few here um, and that might just be a result of them not being capped so we're just going to type cap and it uh, looks like that might have solved it let's go ahead and do another select open poly service oh, and that doesn't look like it solved it so maybe we'll have to uh, look at look back at these it looks like it solved it for some of it 
um, but I'm just going to go ahead and just delete those out uh, since we don't really care. Um, this is going to this at this resolution probably wouldn't uh, wouldn't be all that uh, visible anyway, so that's okay. All right, and so now we have this our building model, and so what we can do is we can take this and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we have all these block instances. We need to scale this down now for 3D printing. So I'm going to take this, select it, and um, you never want to edit your original. That's a good practice. So I'm going to copy away the thing that we've edited. So in case I need to go back or I miss something, I'm not going to put, shoot myself in the foot. So then I'm going to scale. Oops, I'm just going to use the scale function apparently. Uh, and so then we're just going to go down 1 by 8. Okay. All right, and so then this is at 8th scale by foot. So obviously that's still gigantic. And then I'm just going to scale this 1 by 12. Oops. 1 divided by 12. There we go. All right, so now we can take this and just mesh it. And so this is going to create the meshes that will eventually turn into the stereolithography files. So hit OK. And I'm just going to drag that away. Uh, and now we need to do another check to make sure that all of the, the process of doing that didn't tear anything in our model. So let's go to Select Open Mesh. Uh, and it looks like we did have a little bit of uh, tearing in our curtain wall guy. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and you can either choose to start to adjust that or actually here, I'll, I'm going to actually try and fix that by uh, adjusting our tolerances here. So I click on our options, I'm going to our units, uh, you can see we're in millimeters, so I'm just going to go ahead and beef that up. So export, oh, mesh, sorry. Select Open Mesh, oh, and it still didn't clear it out. So it looks like I probably have to revisit this and do a little bit of modeling tune-up. Uh, so I'm just going to delete those out for the sake of um, argument here. And so then we're going to go Select Closed Mesh, and then we can take this and export it. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and put this on my desktop. And we're going to save this as a stereolithography file, STL. There we go. And I'm going to save for 3D printing. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete the, the guy. And it's about 2.5 megs. It's a good size. Uh, and then I'm going to pull up Preform, but uh, you can see I've already been testing this. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just open that guy up for 3D printing. It's about 3 megs. Um, we'll do a quick repair. And uh, it's off because I haven't wasn't very, super um, judicious about making sure that well, it's off because I wasn't um, really caring about how accurate it was. I was just really more concerned about the, the mesh typology here. All right, and then so we have this guy, and this is now a 3D printable building. And so that is how we would enable a workflow to go from, uh, essentially from Revit to 3D printing with our building geometries. Okay, all right, and that's it.